The Lord be with you. God's blessings to all of you on this July 20th as the church commemorates the prophet Elijah. For this commemoration, we will be using the daily prayer for noon, found on page 296 in the Lutheran service book. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The psalm for this commemoration of the prophet Elijah is Psalm 43. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man, deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God. To God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the lyre, O God my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading for this commemoration of Elijah is taken from 1 Kings chapter 19. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as a life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he arose and ran for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, it is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank, and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Elijah was on the run. His life was at risk. He had just performed one of the greatest miracles ever recorded. And for it, he was given a death sentence. That wicked Queen Jezebel wanted Elijah eliminated. For too long he had been a thorn in her side. He had dared to preach against the royal family and their reign, denouncing them for their many sins, for abandoning the Lord and his commandments and for worshiping the false god Baal. There were other prophets of the Lord who dared to do the same, but she was able to have most of them put to death. However, the prophet Elijah eluded her. Every time she and her husband tried to kill him, he was able to slip through their fingers. But now she was determined to have the prophet killed. 
for Elijah had just laid down the ultimate smackdown on her prophets. 450 prophets of Baal, to be exact. He had convinced King Ahab to gather together the prophets of Baal for a showdown at Mount Carmel with the people of Israel in attendance. The challenge, one bull for Baal and one for the Lord, each placed upon an altar with wood but no fire. The prophet would call upon the name of their God, and Elijah would call upon the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire is the one true God. The prophets of Baal went first. From morning till noon they cried out, but nothing happened. They prayed and danced and even cut themselves, while Elijah stood on the sidelines taunting them. Cry louder, for maybe he is relieving himself, or on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. The prophets of Baal continued to rave on, but to no avail. There was no answer. Then Elijah called on the people to come near. He rebuilt the altar of the Lord that had been previously thrown down, and had it, the wood, and the sacrifice soaked with water three times. Elijah then approached the altar and prayed, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, that this people may know that you are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. And immediately fire rained down from heaven and consumed the offering and altar. When the people witnessed this, they cried aloud, The Lord, He is God. Then Elijah called upon the people to seize the false prophets. And once they did, he slaughtered them with the sword. Now you would think that this great revelation and victory of the Lord would have led all the people to repentance, that they would tear down their idols and worship God alone, that it would have led the royal family and the powers that be to cover themselves with sackcloth and ashes and crawl to the true prophet of God, seeking the Lord's forgiveness. But as we know, this didn't happen the people once again were quick to harden their hearts. And that wicked Queen Jezebel, after hearing what happened to her prophets, vowed to end the life of the prophet Elijah. Is it any wonder why we find Elijah in the sorry state that he's in at the beginning of our reading today? He had just received word that Jezebel vowed to kill him. And so he runs. He runs for his life. He runs for an entire day until he collapses from exhaustion in front of a broom tree. Fleeing for his life, he had lost all his strength, his hope, his will to survive. The very prophet whom God used as his instrument to proclaim his word, to perform miracles, to bring comfort and hope to the people, considers himself at this point to be an utter failure. He even says to God, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. Here we see the weakness of this great prophet. But it's in this state of weakness that we can best sympathize and relate to Elijah. For I'm sure we've all had those broom tree moments, times when all your hard work seems to fall apart and come to nothing, moments when you stand up and boldly proclaim your faith at school, at work, or even amongst your family and friends, only to find your words fall on deaf ears and hardened hearts, those times when you are mocked and ridiculed for your faith in Christ Jesus when you experience suffering or even persecution, 
and you just want to run and hide or simply throw in the towel. I know of a few pastors who have found themselves in the same state. Times when they feel all their labor has been in vain. Times when it seems their preaching falls on deaf ears. That the only tangible results for their faithful work has been suffering and hardship. Or even persecution from the powers that be for preaching out against their sinful ways. But no one ever said that it was going to be easy. God doesn't promise us a road without the cross. In fact, he tells his faithful to expect suffering and hardship in this life, to expect the world to hate us for our faith. Jesus says to his followers, if the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, Therefore, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. These are sobering words from our Lord. Words that teach us that if we are to follow him, then we must bear the cross in this life and endure suffering, hatred, mockery, and even persecution. And yet, as we know all too well, we often find ourselves crushed under the weight of our crosses, without the strength to carry on. We find ourselves in the same situation as Elijah. Yet although God does not promise us a life without the cross, He does promise to provide for our needs, to provide the strength needed so that we may bear our crosses. We see today how he provided for his servant Elijah. He says to his servant, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. The angel of the Lord comes down to Elijah and provides for him heavenly food. Spiritual food that provides the physical and spiritual nourishment he so desperately needs. For forty days and nights, Elijah was fed with this food from heaven, and by it he received the strength needed to once again continue down the path that God laid out for him. My friends, when Elijah was at his lowest point, God did not deliver him from his hardships. Rather, he nourished him with heavenly food, which gave Elijah the strength to endure and bear his cross. And he does the same for us, yet in a far greater and more miraculous way. For the nourishment that he offers us is far greater food than he even a blessed Elijah with. For the nourishment that he offers us for our journey is the very body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord offers to us his flesh that was sacrificed for our sins. His blood that covers our failures and sins and grants to us life. As we feel crushed under the weight of our sin and crosses, he comes to us and says, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. The journey is too great for us to journey alone, which is why our Lord provides what is needed for it. And so he comes down to us in the Holy Supper and says, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Take, drink. This is my blood, which is shed for you. What our Lord Jesus offers and gives to us is the bread of life, the gift of himself. And with this gift comes the victory of the cross that he won for you. Not only does this food restore your strength, your zeal, your will to serve God, but it also grants to you the forgiveness that Jesus won for you, as well as the most precious gift of all, everlasting life with God. For our Lord says, 
I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as it was for Elijah, so it is with you. The journey is too great for you. The cross is too heavy to bear alone. But do not despair. You are never alone. Your gracious Savior is always with you, offering to you the nourishment and strength you need to continue on your journey. And just as God provided for Elijah in his time of need, he will provide for you. He will provide for you the spiritual food you need. So arise and eat for strength, for forgiveness, for life. Amen. O Lord, have mercy upon me. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Merciful and gracious Lord, as you watched over your servant Elijah and provided for his physical and spiritual needs, blessing him with the will and strength to endure his hardships and to continue to faithfully serve you, we pray that you bless us during our times of suffering, especially during the times when we are persecuted for our faith. Bless and nourish us with the heavenly food of your life-giving word and sacraments, so that we too may have the will and the strength to endure our hardships and faithfully serve you in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, before whom all in heaven and earth shall bow, grant courage that your children may confess your saving name in the face of any opposition from a world hostile to the gospel. Help them to remember your faithful people who sacrificed much and even faced death rather than dishonor you when called upon to deny the faith. By your Spirit, strengthen them to be faithful and to confess you boldly, knowing that you will confess your own before the Lord in heaven, with whom you and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen.